Um, so today we'll look at, you are here at the introduction to Aurelia. Um, today uh, we will take a look at uh, what is Aurelia, um, what do you need to get started using Aurelia, the CLI, which is the common line interface, which is a tool we created to start using uh, Aurelia itself. Uh, we'll look at how to do data bindings, how you can handle events, um, and I hope we have enough time to look into how to build custom um, elements and time for questions. Um, so first of all, who, am I, who is Eric? Uh, I'm a software developer at the factory um, where we build a suite of uh, employee feedback related systems um, in um, csharp.net, uh, .NET Core, and uh, for the front end, we use uh, Aurelia as a, uh, a front end framework. And I'm also a Aurelia core team member. I work mostly on the Visual Studio Code extension. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at uh, Erik Liebe. And uh, I also organize a Aurelia Amsterdam meetup and a .NET Amsterdam meetup where we do meetups uh, about a, um, yeah, basically either, even on, either on Aurelia or on, or on .NET. Um, so first of all, we look at what is Aurelia. Aurelia is a framework to build modern single page applications. Um, it's built by the Aurelia core team, which is uh, logical maybe, but um, that's a team of around 27 developers. And what they do is they, during their day job, they build uh, applications using Aurelia. And during their spare time, they work on, on the framework. Um, during their spare time, they work on the framework, and this allows uh, them to experience the framework itself and, and work on creating a better framework. Now, the framework itself is built with JavaScript, uh, so you can use it from TypeScript, which is the title of the session, but you can also use it um, with plain JavaScript. Um, the thing to, to remember about this is it is a modular system, not a monolithic system, so it's all, uh, and what that means basically is it's all small uh, libraries which together give you the, which together give you the framework. And this allows you to use one of those small libraries in another application. So for example, the Visual Studio Code extension uh, for Aurelia is using only the dependency injection framework um, and not whole framework uh, in as a whole. Uh, it also allows you to replace uh, small parts of the system itself so you can, for example, if you don't like the view engine, you can replace that. It's, it would be a little bit of work, but you can replace that, for example, so Aurelia understands knockout views or uh, Angular 1 views or um, those, those things are possible. Possible. It's leveraging the modern DOM standards and web component technology. So you are learning uh, new technologies and learning how to do um, next generation JavaScript and HTML uh, techniques. And one important part about the framework itself is that it's using convention over configuration. Um, and what that means is that we have a lot of conventions in place for you to easily get started. So you don't need to configure a lot. You don't need to set up everything. You can get started very quickly. Um, and one of those things uh, is, for example, if you um, just start up your application, which, you will sh which I will show in a bit. It will just um, burn out of the box with, with very little configuration. Um, so what do you need to get started? If you've never done anything at all with JavaScript, you need the Node.js runtime. Um, the Aurelia CLI is our command line interface, which I will show in a bit. Uh, which is used to create a, a default application for you, so you can easily and quickly get started, and you will build and package your application with it. And you can install it by simply using npm, that's the node package manager, i is short for install, uh, the Aurelia CLI is the name of the application, and dash g means install it globally, so you can execute this command from everywhere. Um, it's very easy to use the Visual Studio Code Editor because there is an extension for that which allows you to easily um, uh, get, out of get uh, suggestions and um, um, basically help you out writing the code. And there is an Aurelia uh, inspector for, for Chrome 
which allows you to see while you're debugging your application what's currently bound to uh, a specific HTML element. So what we did with the CLI itself is um, you can basically uh, type our new and this will allow you to um, set up um, the, the application or set up the basis for your application in the way you want. So you can either pick a default way or you can pick any of those um, options. So you can choose to use Webpack, uh, you can choose require AS, use uh, TypeScript, Bay, Babel, which is another... Um, Babel is basically the next generation of, of JavaScript code that you can write and it will trans transpile back to JavaScript that your browser still understands. Um, is this readable? Um, so what you can do is uh, by typing out in a folder, currently my folder doesn't contain any Aurelia projects. Um, so when I type out, out um, AU, sorry, AU, it will tell me you can type out new to create a new project. And here is to create it in, in place. So you can, for example, create a .NET Core application and do AU new uh, dash dash here and it will create everything in place so you don't get a folder. So I can now, for example, do AU new. If I don't specify the name, it will ask me for it. So we'll say it's called a Aurelia application, which is okay, which is fine by my for me. And uh, now it allows you to pick uh, one of the options. So we have a default ES Next, which is basically then you use uh, Babel JS to create your application. We have a default for TypeScript. So for example, if I would uh, pick TypeScript, it would say, okay, I would set it up with those uh, tools installed. These are all uh, JavaScript tools built, um, open source tools that you can use to generate applications. Now I will restart it for now, because what you can also do is uh, pick custom, and this allows you to uh, pick the things you like. So you could say, for example, I would like to use uh, require.js as a bundler. Um, I can pick TypeScript here. And now it will ask me, okay, what sort of minification do you want me to set up for you? Um, so I can pick uh, minimal minification or maximum minification that removes everything that sometimes gives a bit of um, unwanted scenarios if you have HTML with, with spaces inside of them. Um, Next step, it will ask me what sort of CSS preprocessor would you like to use? So you can use less SAS styles or post CSS and the, the CLI will set that up for you. So I can pick a, a random one. Uh, next step, it will ask me, it will ask, uh, will you, um, would you like to add uh, unit testing? Um, if you pick the Webpack um, bundler, we have uh, something, uh, some parts of the CLI are a bit further developed, so then it will also ask you if you would like to use um, Yasmin with Karma or Yasmin with Yest. In this case, because I choose, chose uh, require AS, it's asking, do you want to use Karma and Yasmin for unit testing? So I would say yes. And next up, it will ask me, what's the code editor you, you're probably going to use? Uh, what this will do is set up some basic things for your editor. So, for example, in Visual Studio Code, that you don't get Angular 1 suggestions because you don't need them. Um, and then it will ask me, would you like to create it? But this, would you like to create this project? No, yes, of course I want. Um, then it can also install the project dependencies for you. I don't have uh, internet, so I won't do that now. And what you now get is a Aurelia app um, folder with your, uh, with your product pre-generated for you. So, um, so by default, it will add, oops, I don't want to see those. Uh, so this is the project that will generate by default, which will mean it, create a, it will create a Aurelia.project folder, which contains an Aurelia.json. And in this file are all the uh, options you just specified um, using the wizard style thing we just saw. 
and this is also used to uh, by the different tasks to generate something. Uh, we can start up the application by doing by doing our you run. Um, I can't do that now because my presentation and this one is running in the same um, is is running on the same port. Um, and what this is is a uh, or sorry in the task folder is a uh, list of tasks that you can run and all of those are basically Gulp tasks uh, which can be started and Gulp is a, a build system for uh, front-end applications uh, so you can modify these and and run them from within array itself there's a folder called generators which contains easy to uh, use uh, generators to for example create an element create a uh, task or attribute uh, binding behavior. A uh, binding behavior is uh, if we bind to something, we can customize uh, that behavior to, for example, be a one-way data binding or two-way data binding, or something you want to build your, uh, yourself. Um, and there is an environments folder. In this folder, we have a dev production and stage uh, file. And what the CLI will do as soon as you start up your application, by default it will run the development build, so it will replace the um, environments.ts file in your, uh, basically in the source folder, this is all your code. It will replace that and use that, so that's uh, a way to, for example, have a production build with specific um, URLs and have a, um, or, or settings. Um, and have a, a staging built with, with orders. Um, <clears throat> so, I'm gonna, so this is basically where everything from Aurelia is placed. Uh, custom typings is to place custom typings uh, which you would input from uh, NPM or uh, use for packages that are not, uh, that don't contain type definitions. Uh, scripts is where the um, folder, where, where all the content ends up. Um, if you can look at the source folder, this is basically all your own code, but it starts with the index.html. And what you can see here, there's the, I just have this in front of me. What you can see here, there's, a, there's that there is one line, uh, one script line, and this will load up the bundle. The bundle is generated by the Aurelia CLI as soon as you type I, uh, O U A U. Um, run or AU build. This will start up and the Aurelia bootstrapper uh, will load up the application and by default it will start looking for a Aurelia.app attribute. But in this case it's specified that it will use uh, main and what it will do then is look for a main file in your source folder and open up the configuration um, configuration function in that. And <coughs> What this will do is um, we have a basically uh, default configuration set up here and um, so the standard configuration is all those conventions. So for example, if you open up a uh, component called foo, it will, it will try to find foo and it will op also open up the view foo.html um, and, and more things. It also specifies that it will by default start looking for app.ts and app.html once you start it. Now this is the environment um, uh, thing we just saw. So for this case, if it's development build, we would use the development locking if it's uh, testing is specified, sorry, if this bit is set. If the testing bit is set, we would use the testing uh, library. And this basically starts up your application. Uh, there is one more thing here that's called feature. And the feature is a way to uh, a bundle or, or put logic together. And you can either create a feature, which in this case is created as resources, which is nothing more than a folder with uh, custom elements, which again has a index file with a configure method, method inside of it. And as soon as I, uh, for example, add a um, foo.html resource in this, in this uh, file, it will load this by default, so I can now use foo as a, a custom HTML element. Um, and there's nothing in this, these folders are all empty, they're just here for you to easily get started. Um, so once this loads, it will start up Aurelia, and it will replace um, basically everything inside of the body, because that's where the Aurelia app 
is set to start up. The, what it will do then is open up app, app, the app file because that's the default and it will try to load this and as you can see this is a very normal or there's no Aurelia code inside of this, it's just a simple class which will be used as view, view model. And there's also a few. Uh, what we use is the um, string interpolation from JavaScript itself uh, for doing data bindings. So dollar sign and the uh, squarely uh, brackets um, to bind something. So this will show hello world on screen. Um, so the first thing you would probably like to do is, is, is uh, do this bind data and binding data can be done on different ways. So by default, uh, what you need to remember is simply the dot bind command. So as soon as you have an attribute, for example, the uh, value attribute or on the input attribute, the value, if we want to bind that, I can just add dot bind and then it will be data bound. So behind this again is a, uh, a file, uh, sorry, a view model. So if you look at the view model, this is a very simple view model. It just contains two fields, first name and last name, and a, a get only property called full name, which is the combination of the two. And here you see back the string interpolation we also used on the, on the, on the front side. Sorry, the view. Oh. Uh, so if I go back to the view itself, uh, what I can do now is, so if I want to data bind, and there is, um, if I want to data bind the value, I can simply do dot bind. And as you can see now, it's bound to Eric. And if I type something in it, it updates the view. And I can do the same for last name and that will work the same. So now I can change this, for example, to John. Um, now there are more uh, binding comments or binding behaviors. And one of them is one way. So that, but that basically means is it will only update from the view model to the view. So if you change something in the view, nothing happens. And that's the most performant way. Um, uh, it's more performant than doing it two-way. Two-way data binding is if the view model changes, it also updates the view. And if the view changes, it also updates the view model. And what bind does is detect for you which one to use. So it will know that ba basically by default, it will use one way. And if it's a control that's uh, modifiable or interactive uh, and it knows that then it will use two-way data binding so for example on form controls you will get two-way data binding and you can see this for example if I uh, take out first name and place that in a oh, in our HTML binding so it will just bind to the content of the span Now, in this case, I can't modify this. But what I can do it's, is uh, provide a content editable, which makes this which makes this control editable. And as you can see now, I should be able to update uh, the value itself. So now it's using a more resource, uh, it's using more resources because it also needs to check if something happens on the front end of in the interview itself. Um, so it's a bit more resource. It's, use, it's using a bit more resources. And there is another one which is called one time. For example, if you know that the value you're using is not going to change, then you can use the one time data binding to, to, basically, then to basically use less resources um, than with all the other ones. Because the framework will then, ju then just say, oh, it's only updating once when the application starts. So I will place it inside of the inner H or inside of your DOM element and not look at it. Uh, we, last week we added a new one, which is from view, um, which allows you to only allow changes from that happen in the view itself and push them back to the view model. And to make that more easy to use, we also added a two view, which is basically an alias of the one way data binding because it's changes from the view model that move to the uh, view. Um.
yeah so but you can but you can also see is for example if i make this one way just as an example uh what you'll see now is that it's not updating anymore it's only updating the field itself because it's not sending those changes back to the uh, view model and this allows you to so basically the only thing you need to remember is the dot bind command which is what you will use most of the time and the other ones are to um, um, specify it explicitly if you would like and the next thing you would probably like to do is after you have data on the screen is, is show data so we respond to events um, so for example a user could fill out a name and, and you could add a click button or something and to understand to understand how that works in Aurelia we first need to look we first need to look at how that works um, within the HTML browser itself. And back in the day when Microsoft and Netscape were having a lot of fun to uh, figure out which browser was better, Microsoft said we're going to use the event capturing model. Huh. Netscape said we're going to use the event capturing model and Microsoft said we're going to use the event bubbling model. And they basically do a little bit of the same. They allow you to delegate work. So what will happen? They do a bit of the same. Um, they allow you to delegate uh, the events um, and allow you or allow you to create a delegate that will uh, sit on the document element. And as soon as an event happens, uh, move. Um, sorry, if you have a list of, for example, a million items, and in, in that list, you need to add uh, a click event. So each of those items will have a click event. That means it will need to take a lot of click events or store a lot of click events, and it's very resource intensive. And um, the event capturing, event bubbling system allows you to add a um, event handler on the top element, on the element above uh, the element or on the root element, and allow you to delegate work of the click event to um, the, the event that Bert actually occurred upon. So what will basically happen in the event capturing mode is as soon as you click on the event um, uh, HTML element, it will go up to the topmost element and it will step down and look for event handlers to fire. So if body contains an event handler, it will fire the click event itself. And uh, in the event bubbling case, it will if you click on the uh, image element, it will go up till it found the topmost root element. And what this allows us to do is create a delicate method or a delicate uh, way of handling it. And this is not something new. It's, it's something also used, for example, by uh, jQuery uh, to, to, to optimize performance. So what you will see is that we basically have the same names in here. And as soon as... Um, I add, for example, so there's one new thing in here, uh, which is the repeat for uh, element, which I will explain in a bit. It was not on the right uh, line. Um, the repeat, repeat for allows you to repeat over a list of, uh, or over a collection. So it will simply allow me to, if uh, there are three items, it allows me to show those on screen. Um, so let's say, for example, these are a million items. What I can do now is use delegate. Sorry, uh, I can just type the name of the event I want to bind to. For so, for example, click, and I can type delegate and uh, a method. So what will happen now is it will go to the topmost element, at, attach a um, event handler there, and as soon as you click on an item, it will pass through the top and redirect back to this um, to this method. So it will show you uh, it clicked. And then on, oh sorry, on the back of this, I have a uh, simple view model, which basically contains, so again, there is not, no code of Aurelia in this uh, class itself. It's a simple class. It just contains a method called click, uh, event, and mouse event is the type definition. And I simply check if the event is, is given, then I say in which phase it's uh, running, and otherwise I just so cl show clicked. Oh. Uh, 
There is um, also one for capturing, which basically does the same only then in the other, uh, in the capturing mode. So this is useful um, if you have an overlay or something. In some cases, this is more useful because you can uh, cancel out on each of those steps. Uh, you can cancel out um, the, the walking of the going from parent to parent or going down. And there is also a trigger which allows you to um, say, okay, I don't want to use this mechanism. I just want to trigger it directly and, and trigger it right away. Um, so, for example, if I would change this, oh, it's gone again. If I would add a click event uh, and I would trigger it and I would run the same uh, method, what will happen now is that it will add a event handler to item one and item two, item three, and, and everything that follows. So it will take up a lot of resources. Um, oh, I just remember there's one more thing. Oh, I forgot to say something about, um, I skipped over a small part in the data binding um, of this, uh, section. Um, as you can see, in the uh, view model itself, I have a full name property. And what Aurelia does is it tries to observe those properties in the best way possible. So if I have a first name, um, it will, because JavaScript is a dynamic language, it will replace that field with a mechanism to know when something changed. Uh, but on the uh, get property, fill name, it isn't able to do that. So what it will do is um, step to the different ways of doing this, of, of um, uh, observing. So on first name, it can simply know as soon as something is modified, I will update it. Uh, but on full name, it's unable to do that. So what it will do in that case is use something called change detection, and it will try to compare and look if something is different. Now this isn't optional, or this isn't very useful because then something is constantly checking, did something change, did something change. And what you can do uh, in Aurelia to, to resolve this issue, is you can uh, add the computer decorator. So this is basically the first time we are importing something from the Aurelia framework itself, uh, which is required to do something. And basically what you tell the framework, this, so this is a decorator, which is close to a C-sharp attribute. It's in the um, ES Next specification. I believe it's not fully, fully um, accepted yet but a lot of frameworks are using it, so it's most likely to end up there. And what this will do is tell the framework, this property is based upon first name and last name. So it can observe first and last name, so it knows if first name is changing, I also need to update the full name. And it will not constantly check if something is different or changed. Um. So if you go back to a replication itself, uh, what you can do is create custom elements. So for example, if, um, if this would be a uh, navigation menu or something that I would reuse a lot, or, or I want to clean up my code, what I can do is uh, create a new file. And I could simply say, let's say for example, nav.html, uh, sorry, navigation and add uh, template tags. Those tags are uh, from the uh, web component specification. So they, they are required uh, for web components. And uh, let's say, for example, I have some navigation inside of this um, uh, HTML uh, snippet. What I can do in the app.html is say, require um, some resource and I can require from, and I can say, I would like to require navigation.html. And what this will allow me to do now is simply, if I had the navigation here, uh, use the navigation tag, and it will print out the navigation itself without using any code behind. Now in some cases, for example, in a navigation case, you might want to give it the uh, things you can navigate over. 
Um, now I don't have them here, but for example, if I would like to show the message in my navigation element. Now, because this is only HTML, you can't add um, any property here. But what you can do is add a bindable uh, property on the top and for example, call that message. And what I can do now is bind to uh, the value message. And I can now specify this. So it's created an attribute for me, or it will uh, uh, be an attribute. And I can bind to that and specify it, uh, the message from my view model. So it's now um, showing that inside of the navigation um, custom HTML element. Now what you can also do is create a custom HTML element uh, with code behind. So you can create a view model. So for example, if we would have a foo, foo.ts file with a class foo uh, view model, doesn't really matter how this is called, as long as, as long as it's exported, because what export means is that it's available outside of this file. Um, and I can add another file um, foo.html, which is again my template. And now you can um, and what you can do now is simply use the constructor to set up uh, things if it's loaded for the first time. And oops. Now, in most cases, what you might want is to inject something into this. So what you can do is input the dependency injection um, decorator from the array layer framework. Oh, I don't have, um, I didn't install, I didn't install my NPM packages, so it's not aware of um, uh, anything that's called the radio framework because they are not there. What I can do is open up um, a presentation project and uh, use that. Uh, so this is basically the presentation as is a really application and um, what I can do is uh, say for example create a foo.html in here. Let me copy and paste this over. Oh. So this is the template again and I can also add a uh, foo.ts file, oops. And paste my code in there. And what you can now do is add a inject decorator above the class and uh, for example import or inject the current element uh, that's used by element that's used by this uh, uh, custom component, so basically it, you will get the element itself, but you can just as good um, inject anything else. So for example, there is a task queue, which is a um, method to, or a way to, in, in, in browsers themselves, there is a task queue and we created something around that. And the task queue allows you to um, basically on the right moment in time, uh, push things uh, on, on the stack and this allows you to uh, do something after any, uh, after bindings, after all the bindings are uh, uh, set up, or sorry, uh, uh, done. It might be easier to explain if I just use DOM. So there's a object, document object model, uh, which you can also inject, which is a class uh, from the Aurelia platform abstraction library. So there is something in between uh, to allow the framework itself to um, 
uh, be run uh, be run inside of um, Node.js without a browser. So there are the, when there are a lot of things missing, so, uh, missing in in the um, so you can't add event handlers, for example, if you're running a Node application because they might not be there. That's not correct. You cannot do things with with the browser itself that are specific to the browser. Um, so what you can do is inject. Um, oh. I remove that one. What you can do is use the dependency injection to inject that. So you could say, for example, I have DOM. Oh, so I add the typing. So what it will now do is, as soon as it creates this class, it will inject um, the document object uh, model um, uh, abstraction for you. Or it could, for example, be the HTTP, cli oh, HTTP client. which I did not install in this part. It could also be the HTTP client, which you can inject and then use. And another thing you can do is, because this will become a long list of um, different uh, things you inject, and what you can also do if you use TypeScript is use the auto, uh, auto inject uh, decorator. And what this will do is look at the properties or uh, parameters in your uh, constructor and try to figure out what it needs to inject. So this will do that job for you so, that you, so you don't need to do that yourself. Um, yeah, that was basically um, a uh, introduction to Aurelia, I hope. I hope it was understandable because I missed some uh, uh, spots and uh, was a bit nervous. <laughs> Are there any questions or? Yes. Um, yeah, what you can spec you there are two ways to do this. You can add a binding behavior, which allows you to um, so, for example, if I have a um, on an event you meant, right? On the, the key, um, that's yeah. I know it's possible, but it's not in my head now. But what you can do is specify um, uh, when to when to do this. So, if it's on blur on change, you can do that on a binding itself. So basically, specify. So if I have a um, Let's say I have a input box with a value dot bind, and this is, for example, message. What I can say is um, uh, use a binding behavior, which is what you do when you add the n, n sign, and you can say uh, say debounce, uh, debounce, and for example, say 500 milliseconds. So then it will not update each time, but but collect that. And there are different ones of the, the um, uh, binding behaviors as debounce, uh, throttle. Uh, you can do it with a signal. So if you have a one ta one um, one time binding, what you can do is a signal to your application that it needs to be updated. So for example, if you have something like a five minutes ago, six minutes ago uh, thing. What you can do then is signal out to the uh, to the binding itself update now and update each sec each second because you want to see that um, um, uh, go back in time. So you want to see uh, this happened four minutes ago, five minutes ago, six minutes ago, seven minutes ago. So that's that's also possible. Um yeah 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 it is po you you set it in some way, but it's I don't know at this moment in time how you do it, but it's change or blur and you can you can uh it's, it's the comment you use and you can set that to define when it needs to be updated, so you could say only do it on blur or only do it on uh, when when each on e key, on each key press or only do it when you click outside of the box. Um, 
I'm, it's passing my mind at the moment how to, to do it exactly, but if you Google it, then you will uh, <laughs> find it. Any other? Oh. Yeah, it has. The, it's um, pretty much the same uh, in 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 terms of what it can do. It has routing. It has uh, dependency injection. There is an event aggregator, aggregator. Um, uh, most of the features you have are also in the Relia framework. The only difference, for example, between Angular 2 is that Angular 2 is uh, using change detection. They improve that a lot by doing and uh, doing a very smart way of change detection. And what Aurelia does is does the obs observing. So it does a little bit of a different thing uh, to, to detecting changes, basically. Yeah. Um, there is one problem with that because my Visual Studio code stopped working, so I don't have many installed, I think. Um, I have two at the moment. Um, what, what I use as extensions is the um, auto import, but I think with the latest version of Visual Studio code that happens by default. Um, I use TS Lint for TypeScript linting. Uh, I use a post CSS um, extension. Uh, which colors um, uh, uh, the code, basically. Um, of course, I use the Aurelia extension. Um, that's, I think, uh, most of it. And maybe SAS, or depending on the, proje on the projects we are building. We are we, we, at the factory, we have uh, two Aurelia applications in production, which use different. Uh, one uses post-CSS, and the other one is using uh, SAS. So I have one of those uh, installed normally. Uh, so the SAS and the, the post CSS uh, extension. Any more questions? Yeah. Sorry? Yeah. Um, it will just work in any editor. There is a, the, 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 the if, if it's handy in Visual Studio Code, is, is it sometimes a different thing. But there is a um, really a extension for Visual Studio Code, but I think it only, um, it's less um, um, worked out or less um, minder uitgebreid, um, less, less extended than, than the, uh, the Visual Studio Code extension. Um, so it works best here. But the radio is not, uh, not at all bound to a specific um, uh, editor. You can also use the, um, uh, the editor from ReSharper, I believe. They also have an extension called um, Storm something. Uh, a radio storm, I think. Web, web, web storm or the radio extension of the radio uh, ReSharper editor is you can use the radio storm extension. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah. The, the thing is, with it, it doesn't really matter which of the frameworks you 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 take for this. Um, it's a lot about your environment and and what is the environment you work in and and what you're used to and comfortable with. And, and where you need to deploy your applications to. Um, so why would you use Aurelia? I, I, I'm using it because it learns me uh, a lot of the new DOM uh, standards. So it's very close to that and it tries to keep close to that. So I'm learning a lot of uh, DOM or HTML things and I'm not learning a framework, uh, which is important for me because I can reuse that knowledge because maybe it, in, in five years from now or so, um, there aren't any frameworks anymore, but everyone is using the thing that's built in your browser, if enough people have that installed and, and, and uh, et cetera. Um, I, I basically like the patterns they, they use. So the, the, the dependency injection parts, 
uh, the simplicity of the binding system. There isn't, if you compare that to Angular, you have uh, brackets, and, and, and which is basically for me more complex. But if you learn that, then that is easier to, to, to use maybe. Um, so there isn't a yes, you should use that. It's what, what you try them out and, and see what feels more comfortable. Um, the performance difference. Um, if, if you have properties that are uh, set up um, and are using observables in Aurelia or are observed, uh, then it's very fast. And what's, it's using that task queue thing, what I showed you earlier. And what it allows you to do, what it allows the framework to do is basically queue up all the changes and push them out as once, in, in, uh, at once. So uh, it's not constantly doing um, updates to the DOM or, or um, to the repainting or, or basically working, but it allows you to do that in batches and that makes it very performance. Um, uh, not heavy, but light or um, um, better performance, basically. There, there is a uh, performance test. Uh, I don't know the, the URL out of my head now, but Aurelia scores um, around the same as, as we react, I believe, and, and Angular at the moment in, in speed. Angular, f Angular 4, that is. Um, so there's not much difference between those two. Thank you very much. <laughs>